Hello everyone, uh, welcome to this lecture. In uh, this lecture, um, I'll teach you how you can apply machine learning uh, classification algorithm, uh, which is uh, supervised classification uh, using the Erzingen um, cloud computing. Uh, and will be by the end of this tutorial, uh, you'll be able to convert a satellite image here uh, into a land cover uh, classification map. Um, you know, the good thing about this is uh, you can change the steady area uh, to, a, a, you know, a choice of your steady region or your country and apply this code um, and uh, d derive a land use land cover map by the end of this tutorial. Um, so um, before we get started, um, if you are new to Earth Engine, uh, if, you're, if you're aware of Earth Engine or if you're currently using Earth Engine, disregard this, this part. But if you're new to Earth Engine, uh, I'll just like to give you a brief demo about what Earth Engine is before we get started to the machine learning, you know, the details uh, of this, this presentation. Um, so uh, if you're new to Earth Engine, type in Google Earth Engine. And so Google Earth Engine is um, a cloud um, cloud competing uh, uh, platform uh, uh, provided by Google. And this platform has been um, on. Um, uh, um, so this platform has been uh, for several several years now. Uh, Google is providing this for um, non-commercial uh, use for academics and research purposes. And and currently they have launched a, a, another commercial version for for a commercial uh, purpose. But for, for this video will be using a non-commercial version for educational or research um, uh, use. And if you uh, are new to Earth Engine, you'll go um, ahead and then click the sign up button. And in the sign up button, you'll um, uh, fill in a, a pretty short form and your information and also uh, the reason why you um, are applying for the Earth Engine account mostly for um, a, a, you know training um, a purpose or um, you know research uh, reason and um, and um, mostly they'll provide access uh, in the next 24 to 48 hours. So and then you need to have a Gmail account um, uh, I think for for this um, uh, to to work. And once you have an Earth Engine account, then we can get started and uh, apply this uh, machine learning uh, application using big Earth observation data. Uh, we'll be using a, a satellite data, Landsat satellite. But before that, let me give you a brief overview of Earth Engine. And if you click here on Earth Engine, you have a few options. The first main one is the quote editor. So uh, the quote editor is where you know the main uh, quote um, uh, API playground where we'll be using um, um, in this presentation. Uh, so we'll be writing our code uh, here and um, uh, writing our mission learning classification. So let's write our first uh, code here. Print um, you know hello world. Um, if you are new to this, uh, will just help us get started. Word. And if I print this, uh, this is just uh, uh, any uh, you know uh, code code editor playground. If you click run here, you execute your hello world. So, so this is uh, you know a, a playground for JavaScript, JavaScript version. Um, so Earth Engine has uh, a few options. One of it is a Python API, and the other one is a JavaScript. So we'll be using the JavaScript uh, version, which is. Um, really a robust um, you know API uh, was many visualization and and whatnot um, compared to the Python you know the Python uh, API as, as well has some um, you know um, advantage in some situations um, you know for example you can use um, you know, use it in a collab or Jupyter notebook and then you'll be able to pull in um, some of the, the cool you know data science uh, libraries and 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 whatnot. So these are some of the uh, you know various uh, APIs. So let's get back to um, the Earth Engine um, platform just to give you a background. If you're new to Earth Engine again, so you have data sets here. If you click to data sets, you have uh, you know library of data sets about uh, five um, uh, petabytes of data sets currently on on the Earth Engine API. 
So you have you know data from satellite uh, to um, uh, climate data, uh, satellite data, you know weather and atmospheric data. You can see here satellite data. We'll be using um, this Landsat satellite in our tutorial here today. Uh, and you have you know Landsat uh, you know collection. Um, Landsat has different uh, you know instruments. The Landsat nine, the Landsat eight, and Landsat seven, and um, some of the legacy Landsats here. And then you have a library of data sets. It's it's you know MODIS uh, high resolution data, and then some uh, land cover data. So this is one of the recent recently launched uh, dynamic or land use land cover data and some uh, night timeline and uh, you know crop land there is a whole lot of you know data sets on the earth and you can also click some of this um, um, you know tabs here and you can choose um, you know whatever data you're requesting you can type it and just uh, uh, search it from the library so um, I think this is good for your introduction if you're new to earth engine let's go back to our edit code editor let's just uh, clear um, this um, you know pages here uh, so we, before we get started to the the machine learning classification I just would like to give you a brief intro about you know the uh, you know supervised classification on the earth engine API um, so in this tutorial as I mentioned we'll be converting uh, you know bigger data uh, you know Landsat data as you can see here uh, for steady region into a land cover map uh, as you can see it on the right and we'll be using you know supervised classification algorithm currently a cart uh, so a cart is a classification and regression tree model on the earth engine api so in the earth engine api uh, we have um, so when you run a classification the earth engine uh, will um, give you the classification output in three different types. So the first one is a classification, um, you know, input out uh, output class, and a, more like a binary class or a discrete class. In 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 this case, we'll be using this in our example. Uh, we'll provide we'll be providing, um, you know, an integer values for the different land use land cover classes. And then our model output could also be a discrete value or an integer. For example, for water body, it's zero. For urban, it's one. So this is more like a discrete uh, classification output. The other option is if you're using a, a, a classification regression, for example, your output will be a continuous value. Um, you know, when you say a continuous, it would be, for example, um, you know, 0 0.4 or 5.3 or something like that. Uh, it's not like an integer, um, a discrete integer value. It's, it's a continuous um, d data value, right? And the last one is a probability um, class. For example, you can also output, um, for example, if you're classifying your a water map, for example, a water and not water buddy, right? Uh, a water and non non water class. So you can also output um, the uh, probability of that class, the uh, probability of uh, that class to be a water. For example, eighty percent probability for that class to be water. So you can also output that probability values as an output of that classification. And the other thing is that, you know, these are not all supported in all classifications. So, so for example, the first, uh, you know, the regression uh, output approach is uh, supported by SVM support vector machine and CART, classification and regression tree. And the other probability, uh, you know, uh, outputs are supported by CART, NAVE base um, and SVM. And so when, you know, when you run a classification, you need to do a, you know, a few things, right? So the first one is you need to prepare your image data. If it's a Landsat or a Sentinel or a MODIS, you need to import or prepare your data, your input data that goes to the classification, right? And the second thing is you need to prepare a labeled land cover data for training. 
uh, you have to either generate a training data or you have to um, um, you know import an already existing training data so that's the second thing you need to have when you run a supervised classification because your model needs some sort of training data uh, a training label for each of the land cover classes that you're generating okay because it's a supervised you have to supervise you know the model it's if you were running unsupervised classification you don't need a training data but in this case you need a prior knowledge uh, or training data for the model and um, you know spectral signature for the land cover types this is for just your own you know visualization to look at the different uh, spectral signature for each land cover class uh, it doesn't necessarily go to the model but it's just for exploratory analysis um, and then once you have your training data you need to train a classifier okay so you need to provide that, that input training data and extract the, the, uh, the spectral signature from the Landsat or, uh, or the Sentinel, whatever you know, satellite data you're using. You need to extract and then uh, train a classifier. And the next thing is you need to apply that, that, that uh, classifier and generate um, an image, a final output image, which is technically a land use land cover classification map all right and the last thing in a supervised classification actually is you know to ask us whether your classification or your land cover map is good or bad and how accurate is it um, so that's called accuracy assessment after, after classification so you need to do all of these things and then um, we'll be doing all of these things um, in our in our coding um, in the next um, session okay and now let's uh, you know get to uh, let's get to coding, okay? All right, so let's get started. So the first thing is to um, you know import you know a land cover, um, sorry, uh, a study area. Uh, you know we want to focus our study area because we're using Landsat data, right? So we need to um, we need to um, have you know established we need to have already established a steady region so let's let's get um, that done out of the way so the first thing is I'll just um, you know maybe write a, a title here uh, countries so for countries I'll import a, I'll just declare a variable called countries here and I'll be I'll pull importing a feature collection so I'll write feature here and the name of that um, actually I can import that um, you know file from uh, from Earth engine already and this is the LSIB uh, 27 that's um, um, and I can copy it or just you know import it however it's easy for you I can copy it here and then close this and then I can paste it here. So instead of this, easy. And I need only one a bracket. Okay, you need to close that in a uh, in a semicolon. And next one is uh, this is uh, so this is a worded countries database, right? So I need to um, choose one country. In this case, I'll be using Ethiopia. So that's my ROI region of interest. And then I'll um, call countries. This one, or just copy paste that. Okay, and then I need to filter specific country. So using this data, I need to. Uh, if you if you want, for example, if if for example, if if a country is different from this, um, hopefully it is, and just choose your own country and apply this this approach. If you're in India or USA or Germany or Brazil. Um, it really doesn't matter. So this model can apply to any country. So just simply change the country um, in your case, and that way you can generate a you know you can follow along and then generate a land use land cover map uh, based on this tutorial. Okay. So I'll filter e, e filter and equal. And then I'll, um, so the country's name is stored in a parameter called country 
in it. So provide that. So that means which country uh, do I need? In, in my example, it's Ethiopia, but you can change it in your case if you want to run this model for a different country, okay? So now let's just uh, visualize this, you know, to make sure that we have already, um, you know, imported this properly, okay? So I'll call map add layer and I'll call my ROI here and um, I don't need to just provide any coloring or anything. Just, uh, you know, give it a name, Ethiopia. It's just a boundary, right? And I'll call it false. Um, the reason is that I don't want to show up. I don't want this map to show, up, to show up here. Once I execute that, I want it here, but I don't want it to show up on the map. So that it's turn it off. That, that's what this false uh, declaration is. And then because I want to adjust the map, the zoom level, I'll create a map center object, okay, and then ROI. All right, so let's just execute this. What it does is it will just uh, change it to um, my study area, but let me just change the zoom level probably about eight. So now I think let's just do it six a little bit. Okay, this is good. So it's zooming to a steady region that I, I need to um, select for this analysis. Now I imported my you know ROI, my steady region for this analysis. And the next step is actually uh, to import the Landsat image, okay? And um, so let's get started and import the Landsat image. Um, so what I'll be using in this um, in this um, um, example tutorial is um, using the simple composite uh, Landsat algorithm, which can uh, remove cloud contamination and whatnot. So we'll have a clear mosaic um, cloud-free image for our analysis in this case. Okay, so let's just drag this a little bit down, and uh, let's create a. Um, and then just let's create a title, make um, a cloud free, a cloud free composite. Okay. In this case, Landsat 8. Okay. All right. So let's create a variable called um, image. So our Landsat will be image. So I'll call the Earth Engine algorithm. Algorithm algorithm oh, it's algorithms right and then Landsat simple composite simple composite okay so by pulling this this is an already existing earth engine algorithm uh, which does um, remove cloud contamination from your Landsat image, which is a, a simple, um, you know, algorithm. Um, so we'll apply that. And it does have, so you need to provide the image collection for this one. So it does need a collection. And so, all right, Landsat 8 row. We'll be importing this data after we finish this function, okay? And then filter it. So this is a long time series data. Uh, for example, Landsat 8, um, you know, starts from 2013. So that's, um, you know, many years now, right? So you need to uh, specifically filter for, you know, a certain year. In our case, it will be 2020, okay? So filter date is um, used to filter the Landsat uh, Im co image collection. Um, for a specific time period. Okay, and I'll provide my start time and end time. In this case, all right, 2020, there are one, there are one, January um, 1st of 2020, and the last date would be December 12th, December 31st, rather, 2020. Okay. And the next one is to actually, um, you know, define whether 
you want to keep it as float. You want to keep it as float, right? Um, we define that true. That way, we'll just keep the data as float. Okay, so this is our function. It will import the Landsat image and apply um, a cloud removal algorithm, which is the Earth Engine built in algorithm, okay? And filter it by date, and that's it. So, but we don't have this image collection already imported. So we'll go ahead and import it from Earth Engine. So Landsat, Landsat 8, so. I'll Landsat 8, I'll just choose, you know, the raw scene, right? And then I'll import it here and name it just like this one, L8 raw here. So when I name it here, it will import it and then I can call it here. So it ha this name has to be exactly the same as the, so that's why I renamed it here. So I, re I renamed it here. So this image, instead of writing all the, I mean, so the other way is to copy paste this, you know, image collection and just, you know, write it here. But instead of that, import it and just rename the image collection and copy that and paste it here. We have already done that, but just, you know, for you to understand what, why do we that, uh, why, why we do that. So instead of, you know, writing, you know, the image, memorizing the image collection, we import it here by just typing, searching it here and then, um, replace it here in the function okay so what this does is it will import the Landsat image collection and uh, remove clouds uh, using the simple composite uh, earth engine um, cloud removal algorithm let's just um, you know plot the Landsat data right so we have imported it let's um, you know make sure that um, it's good uh, for our classification so let's uh, uh, first create a visualization parameter uh, var is uh, true color vis. I'm um, doing uh, a true color compo a true color um, visualization parameter here. Okay, and then I'll provide some um, you know parameters here. Okay, so let's uh, input those those parameters. Uh, the minimum. Uh, value here is zero and the maximum value is uh, 0 0.3. That's um, the uh, the Landsat band values, okay? And then I'll need to define the bands for this visualization. In this case, um, band four, band three, and band two of the Landsat eight. So B4 is band, the red band, and the green band is B3. And the blue band is B2 for the Landsat 8. Now this will, uh, you know, create our, our visualization for, uh, for, you know, displaying the map, the Landsat data that we have um, processed and imported over here, okay? And just in a quick second here. And so finally, let's just um, add our Landsat data over here. Add layer. And then here I'll import the Landsat, the cloud-free Landsat data. I'll copy and paste it here. Paste it here. And uh, I'll just clip this because it's um, it's a large uh, area. So I'll just clip it by my region of interest over here, ROI, right? I'll copy that and then paste it here. And um, after that, uh, I need to provide the visualization parameter I have already created. I'll copy that as well here, so that when it when I visualize, it will just have that um, visualization parameter. And finally, I'll just uh, create simple composite name. This is just you know the name. Um, you can change this if you want to. It doesn't matter. This is just when I execute this code, it will show up here as a layer. Okay. So you can see here, this uh, has already uh, been executed. So this is the boundary for our study region. It's showing up. So once we execute the other one, the Landsat also shows here. Okay, let's just uh, execute that code. And now we'll be able to see our Landsat image, a cloud-free Landsat image.
or steady region. Fantastic. So this is a pretty clean, you know, cloud free image for the year 2020. Um, and we can use this to generate a land is land cover uh, classification, um, you know, using a supervised classification in this case, cart. And I think this looks good. Um, so let's just, uh, you know, go ahead and, um, you know, what the next step now is we have imported our Landsat image, which we'll be using um, for the, uh, you know, classification or machine learning classification. Now, the next step is actually to, you know, generate the training data, right? So let's just, um, you know, generate a training data. Um, so before that, um, let's just create something like here, create training data. So for any classification, for any supervised classification, you need training data. The training data is an already known data points, like sample data points for known land cover classes. And then you input that or you feed that to the model and the model will, will train uh, the uh, the Landsat image based on those known sample data points. And then finally, we'll output a land use land cover map for any place in the study area or for the entire study area. Got it? So, so you know, when you have a supervised classification, as I mentioned earlier, there are two ways that you can feed the model uh, training data. One is you generate a, tr a new training data yourself, which we'll be doing here. I'll show you in a bit. And the other one is import an already existing training data. So let's just create a training data ourselves. But before that, um, let's just, um, um, you know, write the class, the label class that we need to, uh, you know, we need to use in the classification, in the, in the, in the card classification. So uh, I'll create a variable called label. So this is the, um, the, <clears throat> the, um, the response uh, variable that we'll be using. Okay. So I'll just call it class. Okay. So that will be used in our model. And the other one is what bands do I do I use? I have Landsat um, Landsat eight um, you know bands. Which bands am I using? So I have to provide that here. And it will select based on this. It will select the Landsat uh, you know eight bands, and then we'll apply them to the classification. So I'll be using Landsat band one, band two. And I'll be using band three. This is in the supervised classification. And the next one is band four, band five, and band seven. You can you can choose different band combination for for your case. But this is just uh, for this demonstration. Um, you know, choosing uh, these bands. In, in, you know, in your case, for example, you might even add the thermal bands, right? So. But in this case, I'll just um, be using only these bands. Um, and the other one is just let me close this in a semicolon. All right. OK, next up is um, let's write once we created a training, um, you know, data, once we created a, a training data, you know, uh, we will need to merge it. So Let's, let's write that function. And then once we create a training data, it will automatically merge and create uh, you know, the variables for us. And so just so that um, you understand, let's write, for example, here, in this case, um, you know, I'll provide um, water class here in this case, or I'll provide water class as one and urban two. We'll need this when we create the, the training data. That's why I'm writing it here so that we don't have to memorize that. Sorry, this is one. And the other class is, you know, forest. 
Oh crap. And the next one is forest. And last one is barren, right? Okay, so we'll be using uh, all of this when we create uh, the, um, you know, the classification. So this will be, uh, we'll be generating, um, um, you know, water, urban, uh, you know, crop, forest, and uh, barn. So about five, um, you know, different land cover classes. In your research, if you're interested, you can expand the land cover classes. But for this demonstration, this is, you know, suffice, okay? So, so let's create a, a function that will merge uh, all of the different um, training uh, variables. So I'll call them training. So this training um, will have our bank class. So I'll merge. Um, so it has urban and then merge. And it also has forest class, uh, actually crop. And it also has merge of, uh, we have urban uh, crop and water and merge. And we have um, forest. The last one is we have barn. Okay, I'll close that. So you have urban, uh, crop, water, forest, and barn. Okay, now the fun part is to create actually the you know classification, the training, the training data. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll just digitize all of these classes uh, manually uh, based on our knowledge of the area and um, based on high resolution imagery. All right. So this is our study area, okay? And we can choose any um, any data point within this study area, okay? So I'll actually choose the background and add the satellite, the, land, the Landsat satellite data. And sometimes I can also use the Google, um, you know, the Google map, uh, the uh, Google satellite data, rather. Um, so the first class is, um, so if you want to uh, uh, create a training uh, label, uh, in this case, you'll click this. This is a Earth Engine geometry features um, that help you create some uh, feature class or vector data point or a polygon, a line, or a box. So in our case, we'll choose this um, uh, add marker. And then when you click that, it will automatically generate um, uh, a data point here, but we need to modify that. I'll first call it um, um, water and I'll change it from geometry. So geometry, is, uh, it doesn't have attribute. It's just a coordinate information. But in our case, we need attributes. So that's why we're changing it to a feature collection here. And then I'll change the color to blue uh, and then property. That's where you add the value. Do you remember the class? Um, so I'll put it zero. So you remember um, the class uh, I created here. Um, so the label, this is exactly what what it is. Okay. So my my um, you know model um, model parameter will be class. So I'll be uh, inputting all of these training uh, values as class. That's why I'm just uh, you c if you change this one, you ha it has too much. Um, it has to match um, this this one here class. So if I change, for example, to something else, then I would have to come and then change the training parameter or property into exactly mat matching what what that change is. All right. So for example, if it's um, you know a type or something, then you have to also go and change this as type. So the main thing is this really doesn't matter. You can change it to anything, but this to um, the attribute value in the training data as well as your label here in the model um, has to match 
that's the main thing okay so now we have created our um, um, our water class and if you click it it will just turn into it has to be bold to start digitizing now it's bold anything I digitize will be stored as water so let me start from uh, you know this area so this is like Tana the um, um, the um, source of the the Blue Nile and then uh, you know um, in northern Ethiopia so just go ahead and digitize you know create every time you click it will automatically generate a data point if you like if you go here so every time you create you know data points you can see here it's just changing so it's storing it automatically uh, it is uh, importing it as a feature uh, table here it's naming it water here and it's matching exactly that so it's, it's pulling it uh, in the code editor so this number changes every time I, I create a new point this will change you can you can observe that 9 10 so I can go um, and generate another let me just change this into pan to zoom around to other places where maybe we'll have water uh, or just you can change it to a satellite or these are some areas with uh, water buddy or lakes and then I can go ahead and highlight the water and then click so now I'm uh, generating or creating my training data for the classification and in this case a water class and you can change it to a satellite view so this is the water area so we have to make sure that we're just um, clicking everything within the water water area and there are also some other lake types I think the turbidity in these two different lakes are different so that's why they are different colors anyway so here um, okay I think that should be fine we have enough uh, you know water class and the next the next one is So the next one is to actually um, create an urban class. Uh, I think I'll just use the uh, the Google Maps, and this is Addis Ababa area. So I'll zoom in since we are doing an urban, um, you know, an urban uh, class. I'll just go ahead and then create a new one. The next one is an urban class. I'll create a new one. So I'll call it urban and change it to a feature collection and I'll call you one and probably a rate class here yes okay let's just create that cool and it's highlighted then I can start digitizing so these are like buildings right you can zoom in okay so these are buildings so I can just go ahead and then create training uh, sample over you know the building areas and some on a highway yeah this is a highway and and then some in the buildings uh, I think these are big buildings here okay um and maybe this areas some storage or some industry zone here all right i think this is good uh let's just go ahead and create the next class which is forest uh cropland sorry all right so let's create another one and uh, let's just create another one here i'll create another one here a uh, new layer and it's highlighted so let's just create crop oops crop 
and feature collection here and I'll do class and um, I'll do two and some yellow color here all right so let's just find some you know create agriculture let's just use the pan uh, zoom area here so probably outside the city area right some of this area should be a cropland areas so it has a you can see the pattern for the crop field here so I'll go ahead and um, digitize those let me just highlight that okay and will automatically um, generate that crop uh, feature class here training there's only two data points here so I'll go ahead and uh, digitize oops it's changing from pan zoom to let's just highlight again then we can start digitizing let's just go to another place over here so these are all crop areas okay another crop area here these are all crop areas okay um, let's just go to another place okay these are all agriculture areas all right this should be fine and next one is let's create our um, let's create our forest class all right so forest class here I'll choose class and three and then I'll just uh, choose some green color all right forest class it's highlighted here let's find something from the satellite data but also oh there's a uh, a nice uh, force cover here uh, we can go ahead and create that let's make sure that's highlighted okay zoom in a little bit okay so we can uh, go ahead and uh, do our first class so it's automatically creating the training uh, site here the training uh, data here on the code uh, editor Let's just um, change the area a little bit. So this is forest cover. Pretty dense forest cover here. All right, a little more. Okay, I think this should be fine. And the last class is actually um, a barn class. So I'll go ahead and create new layer, which is barn. Okay. So for barn class, I'll create a property class is here, and I'll give it um, class four. All right. So barn area. Let me just uh, use the pan to go to some barn area in the study region. As you can see, okay, where's my map? Here's my study region. I don't want to go outside my study area. So I have, um, you know, collected um, fairly um, dispersed um, throughout the study region. I think this area, let's just change it to a satellite image. So this looks like mostly barn. So let's go ahead and uh, highlight the barn area. Uh, okay. And over here as well. Okay. And. Okay, I think we have enough data for this one. 
So now we have uh, completed our uh, training, you know, capturing our training data. All of the training classes are here. Uh, we have a water class, urban, crop, forest, and barn. So these are, um, you know, separate uh, tables or features. So let's merge them, all of them together so that we have one single training table, okay? So this is what we are doing by, by um, this is how we are doing it by merging all of this here. So we have training here. So I'll call the urban class here. And next I'll call the crop here. And then the water here and the forest here. And lastly, the urban. So this function will merge all of this into a single table, okay? So let's just go ahead and execute that. Um, okay, what is going on here? So the urban is, Oh, there's a typo here. Yeah, that's why. All right, let's execute that. Um, that's because of the typo. Really, there's another typo. Okay, we don't have here this typo here. All right, should be perfect. All right, so we have now our training data. We imported the Landsat image, and then we've generated uh, training data and then merged that into a single table. So now we'll be using this training table uh, into our classification, okay? Okay, so now we have created our training data. Now the next step is to overlay this training data over the satellite image, right? So let's do that. So the first thing we need to do um, to um, overlay the image, uh, these these points over, over the satellite image is let's just um, create a title. On the Landsat image, right? So let's overlay these points. Uh, let's create a variable. So we have now, you know, a training point here and a Landsat satellite data, right? We need to overlay them so that we'll be able to run them in the, in the, in the classification model. So I'll create a variable train image. Okay. And then input. So one thing uh, we need to uh, do is we need to create an input for the model, right? So the input is just the satellite image, but with this band, right? If you simply use the image, you will use all the Landsat um, bands. But if you use the only if if you, if you use only the selected bands here then what you need to do is just import this image, okay? And then you need to select um, the, the bands, right? So select, instead of um, everything, I'll just copy that and then bands, right? So what this does is when we run the model, we'll be using only this, this bands, this, uh, you know, this bands. Band one, two, three, four, five, and seven of Landsat eight. So in our model, we'll be using this image. Instead of using the image, we'll be using this input, which has some selected uh, Landsat eight bands, okay? So I'll be calling this input here. So for the image, I'll be using this. And then for the training, I'll call the training. So, and I'll be using sample regions Earth engine built-in function sample regions what this does is it will extract the landsat bonds for all of these bands um, using the points that we have generated or the trainings that we have generated earlier so that's what um, it's doing and let's create a curly bracket here and in our curly bracket it, it so this function the sample region function it requires two things. The first thing is um, a training label, a, a training data, and also the label. You see, the label is a class. That's what we have created when we uh, do the training. So it needs a table, 
in this case this is our training table and also what uh, what parameter or what attribute am I using to do the classification so we're telling it okay use class here we declared it as a variable label so we need to call that here so the first one is the collection so the collection is what training data am I using okay so we need to provide that training data here so I'll copy this training data here. So I've already used the Landsat image here as input with the selected ones. And the next one is to input the training data, which is here. And then within this training data, which parameter or which field am I using? So I'm telling it use properties class or label in this case. So properties is so label label is this one right so I'll just be telling the the, the sample region parameter to use that um, that parameter which I needed for the for our model uh, classification so now what we have done here is So instead of, um, let's call this function. So what this function does is it will merge the satellite data and the training data together, okay? So we have our image and um, input here based on this, the band selection. And we have our training data here. This sample region function will actually overlay the satellite data with the training points. That way, this um, train image has is ready to run the classification. So we have everything. We have the different bands. So this data, this table has all the band value, the Landsat 8 band value, and also the training class level, the land cover class level, which is water, cropland, you know, forest and whatnot. Okay. So this is, you know, we're almost close to run our classification now. And the next thing we can do is, this is a table, we can just test run, you know, write print, and then test run, you know, if it makes sense. Do we have all the Landsat uh, 8, you know, bands, and do we have also the land cover training data sets? Let's just print and see what we have. Train image, we're printing this overlaid data set here. I'll just copy paste instead and close it. Let's, let's execute that code. To print that uh, training data and just look at uh, you know um, it's it's running so let's just wait a little bit and okay so we have about 225 uh, training points so in this case it's not only the land cover classes but also because of this overlaying of the Landsat image it's also extracting the Landsat bands all right So now this is our final training data with all of the Landsat bands. You see the band one, band two, band three, band four, band five, and seven. So these are the Landsat uh, reflectance values we'll be using in our model. And also the training class. For example, one is urban, zero is water, right? You remember when we do the classic, uh, the training, um, capturing the training data here. So that's what it is here. So this is almost ready to go to um, uh, the uh, model classification, okay? So we are almost done preparing our training um, data for the final modeling, all right? All right, next is, uh, let's, um, you know, let's, um, you know, um, generate the data because for any classification, right? For any land cover mapping, you need to do accuracy assessment. So for the accuracy assessment, you know, let's um, divide this data into two. So we'll be using 80% of the data for model training and 20% of the data for model validation or, or, you know, accuracy assessment. So let's do that here. So what we'll do here is um, we'll create a random, you know, column. All right. So let's just create a random column, which is 
Let's create this variable. Training data. Okay. Let's import this um, this training data here, and then um, random column. This function will create a random column with numbers, right? And so this random column, I'll split the first one as training data, okay? So the first one is a train set. So my train set is a training data. And using this random column, I'll split it 80% of the data to a training. And what I'll be doing is filter here, EE filter, okay, less. Less than. Uh, I'll call the random um, the random field here. I created here, which is created here, right? So using that random field, anything less than zero point eight or eighty percent will be classified, will be categorized as my training data. Okay, and the other one, let's just create the evaluation data. Um, test set so my test set will be for evaluation all right i'll just call the same training data here um, training data here and instead here instead of less than i'll use greater than right uh, greater than equals Greater than or equals. Okay. And then I'll call that random field. The call the single quotation has to be inside. And 0 0.8. So anything uh, less than 0 0.8 will be um, um, sorry, greater than will be um, or 80% will be stored as a test variable. So what this is is that 20% of the data is split for evaluation or validation and 80% of the data is will be used as a, a model training. Okay, so now next step is we'll be using this in our model classification, the first one, the training data, all right? So the fun part is finally, let's do our model classification. So we'll be using the Earth Engine built-in machine learning classification here. So let's uh, write a, to um, a topic here, classification. Uh, classification model. In this case, it's a cart, so regression tree. A cart and regression tree. Uh, classification and regression tree here. And so let's create a variable called classifier so we'll be applying this training data into the cart model okay that's what we're doing here and so we'll be using the earth engine built-in classifier smile cart is the earth engine built-in model okay i think there's some typo here that's why we have okay so every time you use an Earth Engine built-in model, you will change the color here, okay? So if it doesn't change, there's something with the, um, with the, with your, um, okay, so if it doesn't change color, there's some type or something like that. So make sure that if it's, uh, you know, an Earth Engine built-in function, it will show something like the, this purp purple color, okay? And so what I'm doing here is uh, Earth Engine Classifier Smile Cart Train. So I'm training the, the model, the machine learning classification model, using my training data. And later I'll, I'll apply the classification. The first thing is, so which data am I using? The 80% of the data, which is train set, right? So I'll be using the train set here. And also I'll be using, so from this data, which um, which label, which attribute am I using? The label, right? This label here. 
the class okay so that I need to provide that and the last thing is which Landsat bands am I using to apply the classification so this bands so I need to provide the bands and that's it so we're, now what we're doing is we are providing the we're training the model the cart model by providing our training data train set here and a label what label are we using in the classification so we're using the class the land is land cover class is stored in the class label so we need to use that and lastly for the landsat image um, which bands are we using in the model we have already selected that here so we're just providing that so this will train our cart um, machine learning model okay and so once we execute this we execute that now the model is built something is going on here so there is some typo here we have to fix okay ee filter do, 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 do. okay filter ee filter greater than or equals okay so or equals there you go this has to be capital that's why all right we don't see any hopefully any uh, error message here perfect cool all right so we have now built our model so now the model is already trained the cart classification supervised classification model is already trained so the model knows what water body is what cropland is what urban area is so we have literally trained the model okay so we have trained the model that you know all of these areas okay you know for landsat band band 7 this is you know what a water body class signature looks like this is what an urban, you know, uh, class um, signature looks like um, um, within the spectral, uh, you know, the spectral uh, band. So next time, if I want to, you know, ask you to tell me what within my study area, what this land surface is, then the model will tell you. That's what, what, what we're doing here. So technically... Once we apply the classification or once we apply the model to a Landsat image, it will convert the image into a land use land cover map. That's the next step. What we're doing is um, apply this model to our Landsat image. This image, okay? Instead of this image, because this image has all the thermal and, um, you know, the, the thermal bands as well as the the um, the visible bands and whatnot. So we only need the you know this this bands selected. So we 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 provided the input. So let's do the the fun part now. Let's apply this image to um, you know to our Landsat um, Landsat satellite image. So classify the image to the Landsat image, right? So let's classify the Landsat image based on our model. So this is our classifier. This is a model. So let's just uh, apply this model to our image. So let me create a variable called classified. All right. So this classified will store the final classified image. Okay. And then I need to provide the Landsat image. Where is my Landsat image? My Landsat image is input because this one selects all of the spans that I need in the classification. So I'll copy that. Okay. And then where's my model? Here's my model, the classifier. I'll copy that. And I'll say classify. So this is an Earth Engine built in model to apply classification to a satellite image. And then, so I have my Landsat image. And I need to provide the model. Where's my model? Here's the model, the classifier, the card classifier. And if I execute that, I'll have a land use land cover classification. Okay. So what I'm doing now is 
um, when I execute this, let's go ahead and execute that. Fantastic. So what we'll have here is um, a land cover uh, classification map. Okay. And that classification map is already available now once we execute that. I mean, we can definitely uh, visualize that and, you know, so <clears throat> we can visualize that and if we need to and um, export it and whatnot. So let's just um, uh, take a closer look at um, on, on, on that. All right. So um, here, what we are doing here is um, let's just uh, export like let's visualize the the map right let's visualize the map okay so before we do that we need to create some visualization all right uh, let's just create a visualization okay or just uh, define visualization all right so we're doing uh, we're defining a visualization here so it's already the land cover map is already created but let's just create a visualization parameter like coloring and things like that for the land cover okay and then we'll visualize it so i'll create a land cover palette right okay so my land cover palette stores some colors so I'll just um, you know you can you can pick this from color brewer or you know other color um, you know application uh, but just I already know this don't worry about these things um, um, you know uh, you know the other option is just to provide some simply you know blue right and for water class and maybe for urban red. Okay, and then for uh, forest green, maybe. Hopefully this works. And for crop yellow, maybe. All right, and then for um, barren, just gray, right? There you go. Um, and that's it. It's just, we need a one comma and close our square bracket. And then uh, just the final part is map add layer, right? Okay. And then our final land use land cover classification using a supervised um, algorithm. And then I'll call that in the map add layer. And it's, this, since it's big, you know, I'll just clip it using my uh, region of interest. I have a region of interest here. So I'll be using my ROI to clip that data. I'll just use clip function. Okay. And then I'll add a palette, right? I've already created, created a color palette. Let's just uh, create a curly bracket and then um, I'll create a palette. Okay. And then import that uh, land cover palette. I think this is our, okay. Copy that. Okay. And then uh, let's just define a minimum and maximum actually for this visualization. So mind you, the minimum is a water class zero and the maximum is four, which is a barn class, right? So I think this is ready to go. And we can just, uh, we can, uh, you know, write uh, some title here. You can, you can do a land cover or anything. Just maybe I'll do classification. Okay classification map or land cover class, whatnot. All right, so this is our final map. Let's just go ahead and execute that. So when you execute that, this Landsat image um, um, will be converted using our supervised classification into 
a land cover map. Let's see. Execute that. Might take a little second uh, since this is running on Google's, uh, you know, uh, computers, uh, supercomputers um, on the cloud. So it's just uh, taking a little while. Yeah, let's see. So now let's just uh, uncheck this so that we can visualize this. So this is our land use land cover map uh, classification. Um, you know, so you can see here, um, we have imported this Landsat 8 image and we have converted that into a land use land cover classification. I mean, this is not perfect. This is just by any means not perfect. Um, you know, but this is just a simple example that, you know, to demonstrate that um, you can, um, you know, run a machine learning, um, um, you know, algorithm on the cloud using big data. This is this is large data. I mean, you know, a 30 meters partial resolution for for, um, you know, a large country like this and running it in, in a few minutes. It's it's unprecedented. This is great. Um, so, you know, this is just for a demo purpose. It's not a perfect classification, you know, as you as you can see, um, all of the data points that we have captured are like about 50 or 40. So it, it's not it's not um, you know, um, it's not uh, recommended for research, but if you are really doing a, a public, a publish, a publish of research, you need to provide a really careful, uh, carefully created training samples. Um, and if you do that, like for example, for each of the class, if you have, you know, in hundreds or about like a, a thousand data points for a steady region, your classification would be really, really good. Um, and so, uh, you know, that's, um, you know, how you uh, generate a land use land cover map using a supervised classification, in this case, CART um, classification regression tree. And you'll be um, using that um, and capturing a training data. You'll be able to convert a Landsat um, satellite image into a classification. All right. Thank you.